Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to install a two and a half inch drive into your Acer Aspire 5. That rhymes. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, on today's video we're going to show you how to install a additional or a replacement hard drive for your Acer Aspire version 5. Now these are very popular on the market at the moment. There's both Intel and AMD versions with various specifications. Uh, some of them actually come with a separate one terabyte mechanical hard drive, such as something like this. Uh, but quite often they come with just a standard NVMe drive installed, giving you the option to install a separate drive if you want to, to increase your storage space and all those kinds of things. Now you can either choose to, again, you can put a mechanical drive in if you wanted to, the procedure is going to be exactly the same, but personally I would recommend going for a solid state drive such as this. This is from uh, TC Sunbow. This is their uh, 240 gigabyte X3 model. Now I picked this up actually off Amazon, really cheap. There's a fantastic offer on, and I think this one cost me about 15 pounds for a 240 gig drive. So for the sake of 15 pounds to double the storage capacity of the Acer Aspire 5 is fantastic value for money. So stick with us, we're going to take the drive, put it in the machine, configure it, and uh, it should be pretty simple. So let's get into it. Okay, so what tools are we going to need for this? So obviously you're going to need a, a drive of some sort. You need a cross-headed screwdriver or Phillips type screwdriver, something along those lines, ideally magnetic headed, so you, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to put the screws in and out. And also some sort of pry tool or a kind of spludger tool, so that sort of thing. Even a guitar plectrum style device will be fine just to remove the black plastic shell from the back of the case. Uh, ideally also as well, some form of microfiber cloth or something like that just to put the laptop on when it's upside down to prevent any damage to the aluminium shell. Okay, so we've got the unit upside down now and we've got access to the screws. Now there's 10 screws from memory. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So let's go ahead first of all and take out the 10 screws. For this particular job, you don't actually really need a parts tray as such because all of the screws are exactly the same size. So uh, as long as you group them together, it should be fine. Okay, so with the screws removed, now you can use your pry tool or plectrum, whatever you want to use to remove the case. Now, I think I find this easier if I remember rightly, starting from the rear and working forward. Yeah, start from the rear, it seems to come off really nice and easily. So looking inside the unit, now the area we're gonna be concentrating on is this section here. And you should find actually inside the unit itself, there is the tray itself, which is already screwed in, the SATA connector, and you should find just underneath it, stuck down to the chassis, is your connection ribbon. Now this particular ribbon is used to connect the SATA connector to the main board. Now there's two areas where this connects. One is on the end of the unit itself, and the other one is in this corner here of the motherboard, which I'll try and get you some close-off shots so you can see exactly where it goes. So the first thing to do is to actually remove the, the holder or the caddy. So my, there should actually be four screws in uh, these caddies, but mine seems to only have three. So that leads me to think that our friends at uh, PC Broad, or Curry's as they're known in the UK, have actually had a little bit of a dabble with this already, so uh, yeah, we might have to take that up with them. So there is the plastic caddy. That is our SATA connector. And just stuck on here is our ribbon connector, so be careful with that one. Um, there's very small pins on the end quite easy to break. Now actually on the cable itself, it does say on there MB for motherboard and HDD for the hard drive. So obviously make sure you put the right side in the right part of the board. So we're gonna go ahead first of all and do the motherboard one. So there's a small clip on the board and normally it's clicked into place. So all you wanna do is use a nail and just flick it into the open position and then gently insert the cable into the connection. When the cable's in fully, just push the connector down and that should lock into place. 
Then all we need to do is to do exactly the same thing on the other side for the motherboard connector, sorry, the hard drive connector. Again, I'll get a view close up of this so you can see what it looks like. So with the connector open, again, all we do is simply insert the ribbon cable into the connector. And when it's all the way in, just hold the flap down and that will lock it into position. So this gives you a rough positioning of where your hard drive is gonna be or where the connections are gonna be. So we're gonna get our drive now. So taking a look at the connectors on the back, you obviously wanna line those up to where they're gonna be actually on the drive. And then also make sure that it matches up where you're gonna put your drive. So this is the orientation it's gonna be. So in this case, it's gonna be facing uh, up. So now what we're gonna to have to do is actually find some screws to attach the drive to the caddy. Now luckily these were provided by PC World or Acer, whoever you wanna look at, and they're actually in the box. So I'm gonna go and dig those out. So inside our packaging, we've got these uh, set of screws. So there's four screws in there. So we'll go ahead and use those. Now actually, I'm hoping they're gonna be the same as the other screws that hold down the caddy. No, it appears not. So, okay, we've got four screws and on the side of the drive, these should match up with the holes in the actual drive itself. So using again, magnetic screwdriver, ideally, you can just screw the four screws in to hold the drive to the caddy. Now the caddy itself actually doesn't look to be that kind of strong. And if you, for some reason you lose the caddy or you don't have it, um, you could quite easily use some double-sided tape just to hold it in place as long as you're not putting any sort of strain or flex actually onto that connector. So with the four screws in, this is what your drive should look like. And so now what we need to do is actually physically connect the drive to the adapter. So taking note of the dog legs actually on the SATA connector itself, you can lift this section up and plug it into the back and then lower the drive into position. In the top left hand corner, as you're looking at it, you'll notice there is a little uh, standoff, which is there so you can actually connect it up and once this is down, you can press the connector for the motherboard to the hard drive. You can push that down just to make sure it sticks to the side just to hold it in place, but you should find that uh, works out pretty nicely. So now what we need to do is to reattach our three screws, or four screws if you've got the right version. So again, on my particular version, because I'm missing a screw, I'm actually gonna leave the one out, which is where the locating lug is, because that isn't gonna move around anyway. So that's gonna be nice and safe and secure. So just the final check, make sure everything is connected as it should be. And then we can go ahead and put the back plate back on, the pack cover back on, put our screws in, and then we can go into Windows. Okay, so we've got Windows back up and running, and I'm recording this in OBS so you can see what's going on. So the first thing to do is to check to make sure the drive has actually been recognized. So if we uh, go into Device Manager, and then we can look at our drives. So in disk drives, we're now showing the TC Sunbo X3 240 gig. So that's fantastic. So that has been recognized. So now what we need to do is to actually allocate some space to that drive. So right click on the Windows key or Windows bar and type and, and choose disk management. And you should un get the initialized disk information come up. If it's not a new disk, then you possibly won't get this, so we'll go about it another way. Um, so we'll choose disk one, that's the one we want to initialize, and we'll click OK. And as you can see on the screen there, it's showing disk one basic, 223.56 gigabytes free, but it's unallocated space, so we need to actually put a drive letter or attach a drive letter to it and a format. So what we we'll do is we're gonna right click on that one and choose new simple volume and we can follow the wizard through now. So at this point, if you want to, you could partition the drive into two separate partitions if you want to, or as many partitions as you see fit. Just put in the volume that you uh, wish to have there and you can choose to make a smaller partition. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the full size of the drive. 
So we'll click next and we'll assign it a drive letter. And in this case, it's going to be drive D. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this is our final part. So format the drive with, the, with uh, NTFS, default allocation size, and we'll call the volume new volume. Uh, it says perf perform a quick format. I would, I would advise you do actually do that, but don't enable file and folder compression because that will slow down the drive tremendously and there's a little bit of an overhead on Windows, so don't do that. Click on next. And again, it's pretty much it. Just click finish and we're done. So it's formatting the drive. Depending on how your Windows is set up, you probably find that once it's formatted and finished, it'll pop up and show you a new drive letter. And there we go, we got our notification, new volumes, see what happens with removable drives. So if we go into our folders now, and go into this PC, and there we go. So we've got our main C drive, which is our uh, 256 or 240 gig drive, and we've also got our additional new TC Sunbag drive. So now you can go ahead and install games or whatever you want on there. And actually, because it's an SSD, you'll find it runs at pretty much the same speed as the system drive, so you shouldn't have any issues there. Uh, obviously, there are ways you can combine the two drives, so you can choose it so that the new drive is actually a folder rather than a drive, all those kinds of things. But we can go into that in another video if you want to. Just let me know in the comments section below if you want to see those kinds of things. But essentially, that is pretty much it. So now I can use that new volume to install things like games, Steam folders, libraries, all those kinds of things. Or if you're using OBS like I am, you can just use that as your default location for your OBS recordings to go to. But there we go, there is how to install a new SSD or hard disk drive in your Acer or Aspire 5. I've been Mike, this is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.